All right, I'm out here on Hopkins Road. This is one of my favorite places in the entire world. I used to come out here all the time when I wanted a little break from work. I get stressed out, just needed to escape. But since gas is more expensive, I just really haven't been coming out here as much. So this spot right here, we refer to as the rock pile, my friend and I. I've often come out here and shot with my drone or done time lapse and got some amazing photography. I'm on top of the rock pile right here. This is where we often set up our cameras and take photos. I want to point out behind me are the Seven Sister Peaks. John and I attempted to summit one of those. We were stopped by a rock band. We couldn't easily make it over. Maybe I could now that I've been practicing rock climbing, but uh, the view here is amazing, especially at sunset. You can see that trademark Arizona Vista with all the mountains accenting the horizon. So you see this road here. Uh, back in here is where we found that garbage from the human trafficking and drug trafficking cleaned it out. Uh, this road is an old, I suppose, mining access road down below us. And the road that I'm currently on, Hopkins Road, accesses the observatory at the top. However, those two meet at a pass. And above them here is the ridge, which I've traversed before. Uh, many years ago before I filmed anything. I, I want to go up top that and just have a look around and take you with me. So I'm not the only one parked here. That's a little unusual. Um, however, it's a very nice Sunday. The weather's beautiful. I'm just gonna go up this little peak in the start of the ridge here and uh, hang out. I'm not gonna do anything too intense. So it's inescapable. We have more debris from the cartel and their trafficking efforts. That brings up one topic of conversation here. You want to plan for contingencies when you're in the wilderness like this, especially the remote wilderness, doubly so. Now, a lot of people kind of joke about this or don't take it very seriously. I guess that's for you to decide for yourself. But I've come across people literally running drugs and camo. I've come across people loading them up and exchanging cash out here. This is now, unfortunately, the wild, wild west. And, and so it's just something you need to think about for contingency planning. One thing is protection. Maybe that's a knife. Maybe it's a big stick. I don't know, but you need to think about it. So I'm up top of the first little rise. I don't know, maybe I will go the second one. make myself over here to the top of this next hill. It just kind of sucks you in. It feels amazing to be out here in nature. I don't know if any of anybody else uses these high rip stop backpacks. This is a max expedition. These little plastic buckles here are always breaking and they're hard to, to find. As I mentioned, contingency planning is critical to coming in these areas. Many times you'll be with just a couple of you. You're way out, hours from where anybody can respond for help. That means you got to think about things much differently. We're not necessarily walking in a national park or in the city park for that matter. We're way out here and if something goes wrong, we're going to have to take care of ourselves. There's a very good chance I have eyes on me Wherever I go out here, the cartel is everywhere. So if they see me, my big stick, whatever that may be, they may not harass me. 
they don't typically harass people, but it would make them think twice about harassing you. So that's my thought process there. Of course, if you come across an animal, I guess, but I've been thousands of miles from here to Alaska, never had a problem with an animal, not once. Been around grizzly bears, mountain lions, mountain goats, wolverine once. That's a story to be told. I never really had a problem with an animal. Isn't this just awesome? Can't tell me this isn't amazing. The views I'm getting here. I didn't even walk that hard to get here. Just a short way off the trail and nobody would ever know if they stuck to the, to the marked trail. This was even here. One thing that I can't help but comment about is this trail. So I've noticed that there are some old sign of livestock up here. Perhaps that's horses and cows. Uh, I have seen cows up here, but very, very rarely. There's no water or other reason for them to come up here. Now, that sign is very old. That's their uh, defecation, their poo, their road apples, whatever you want to call them. However, the trail is very well defined. This is not a marked Forest Service trail. Maybe some peat baggers come out here once in a while and do the ridge like I had. Um, but truth be told, we saw a sign of trafficking and I just, I can't help but share this because this is where I live and it's becoming more and more of a concern of mine. There's two more contingencies that you really need to take into mind before you come out into an area like that. The first is medical. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what to take. Your, your area and your what you're doing may dictate that somewhat. At some point, I will share with you what I have. The other is communications. Now, if you're in a big park and there's people everywhere, that may just be your voice. But if you're out here, you need to know if your cell phone's gonna work or not, and if it doesn't, you need to have a backup. I can't get over how beautiful these trees are behind me. Many years ago, I went out with my girlfriend and we came to an area much like this. And we sat under a pair of trees that were absolutely beautiful, just like this. Amazing vistas in the distance. We're trying to figure out what the clouds looked like, like we're little kids and all that. The most amazing memories can be had in places like this. And I'm so thankful that I get to share them with you. Hey guys, chip in. I don't know if this is a guy thing or what, but I'm constantly thinking of those what if scenarios. That's my contingency planning. I don't know if everybody does that what if mindset. I was just kind of curious. Maybe kind of nice to just be oblivious and go out and do your thing and go home. Something bad happens, blame it on chance and don't plan for it never to happen again. I, I don't know. I don't know what's the best mindset. What do you think? I wanna to talk to you about one contingency you may wanna plan for in your medical kit when you come out in an area like that. And that's this, and that's cactus needles. Whew, I can't tell you how many times I've pulled needles out of my legs. It's not as frequent as you'd think, but it's enough that I carry a little contingent for pulling needles out. I just wanna get your mind turning and what you might carry with you, but I don't want you to be making these things excuses why you're not coming out here. I feel so many people on YouTube and these cool experts, they're gonna pump your mind full of all this stuff you need to go buy. Why you're not quite ready to do this. The truth is, as long as you got your legs, and that might not even be an excuse, you should be out here doing this. This is an incredible experience. I'm proud to have announced we have reached the highest point on this ridge. The view is just out of this world. It never gets old and my cameras do it no justice whatsoever.
I need to give some credit to the folks that helped me do this sort of thing. Partly I'm wearing pants that Paul, who I grew up, grew up with, used to work with my father, gave me. These are awesome. Thank you, Paul. And then Paul, Peggy, and Sandy got me equipment and gas money to come out here, which I'm extremely thankful for. Paul has come out in several, this is Paul from Arizona, several videos. Uh, Chip has gave me gas money and we've done quite a few little hikes together. And I'm just trying to think, so many people have helped me out. My clients, many of you have come for adventures with me as well. If it wasn't for me being employed, I wouldn't be able to do this at all. My folks, they come and we do hikes together. And everybody that's just supported me over the days and years, I just can't thank you enough because I'm able to do this and share it. And hopefully you can at least share the video. So I can see the other truck has left. I have the area to myself down there. We're gonna picnic. We're gonna have a dinner together down there. And I hope you uh, stick around in the video to enjoy that with me. I'm gonna get back on my soapbox here. I'm showing little clips of garbage as I've been hiking here. It is undeniable that what we're being told with this border is a lot more serious than we even think. And I wanna let you know, we, we can't take these leaders and politicians out there too seriously because in a heartbeat, they're ready to defend democracy and freedom and borders all the way around the world, but they've completely forgotten about and disregarded what they could resolve in a matter of days here with our military or by other means, possibly more civil means, they don't. And I, I hate being negative or bringing up sensitive topics like that. Uh, on another note, I've been watching the show. I absolutely love it. I saw it when I was a very little boy. It's called Highway to Heaven. And partly I'm so addicted to it because every time I watch an episode, I feel just amazing afterwards. It's got a good moral to it and a heartwarming story every time. And that's really what I want you to take away from this. So I don't want my viewers to be afraid or upset or that sort of thing. I just want to bring to light something that I see all the time out here. One thing I haven't planned for is a table contingency. So thank God he gave us a table right here, this big old rock. So my meals out here are very simple. <laughs> my one friend Paul from Arizona kind of teases me, says, well, they aren't very gourmet. Um, and that I will agree with him on. It's always something simple I can add water to. This is a uh, chicken ramen. And then I have canned chicken. We're gonna add to that. And believe it or not, it tastes awesome, but probably isn't too healthy. So what I have here is my little can opener. This is like a military uh, thing, I guess. Um, and they work really good. If you come out here to do this, you'll want to snag one of these little can openers. Well, it's time to add the noodles. I'm going to let uh, this simmer for a while and uh, then I'm going to add the chicken, let it heat up. So one of the only things this could use is a little squeeze of lemon. My girlfriend loved that. She put me onto that ramen with lemon. It's so good. I hope you're enjoying your evening too. I hope it's every bit as spectacular as mine right now. Well, it's about time I get out of here. That dinner was absolutely delicious, but I have no more. 
daylight. The sun has set. There's not a whole lot more I could do up here unless some, one of you want to come camping sometime. Would love to do that up here and do some astrophotography and that. Hey, thank you for joining me on this quick adventure. I want to produce a video, but I've been completely overwhelmed with work. The end of the year is typically a very difficult time. I have to get everything ready for the, the coming year, my books, my taxes. And uh, this year to add to that, I'm having to bring up several new listings at the same time. I put a massive art marketing effort in and I got several new listings here as well as a project I'm having to babysit where some people aren't showing up to work and it's just causing some grief for me. I had to get out and relieve that stress and I really wanted to take you along but I didn't have the time to make a typical video like I do. Let me know what you think of this format. Uh, I didn't add any music and I didn't go to extreme ends to color grade or anything. Um, the thing is when I do create the other videos it honestly takes me about 30 hours of cutting the video to make that. If you're looking to move to southern Arizona I'd love to help you out. You could live a life like this. It's quite fun. I'm a real estate agent. You can find my info in the description below the video.